It's uh, just before six, hopefully nobody was awake right there. Uh, I'm Justin Pritchard, this is the BMW M5 CS. Uh, I've been driving this now for about a week, uh, three assignments, three video features, and I've learned a lot about this car. Now it's time to bring it back to its rightful owners, and sometimes when you're driving a special car like this, that has a lot of places to go and a lot of people to see, you've gotta get up really early to bring it back. Um, and that's totally worth it because I've been driving this for a week and I'm going to share everything I've learned about this car in this fairly long video uh, with you. You're here for the M5 Competition Sport, or CS, the ultimate M5 and actually the fastest and most powerful BMW ever built. But I want to show you something first, and we need to take a little trip back to model year 2000 to do it. The world didn't end on New Year's Eve, nobody had heard of COVID, and I was a teenager watching videos about this machine on the internet with a DSL modem. This is the E39 M5, complete with rear-wheel drive, a 6-speed manual transmission, a 5-liter 400-horsepower V8 that breathes beautifully up the rev range, and track-tuned handling that put it in this perfect place between touring and racetrack. The E39 is largely held as the best driving sports sedan ever built, one of the ultimate driving experiences you can have in a modern car. So that's what a BMW M5 looked like 22 years ago. Today, with the latest generation M5 as a starting point, the CS adds little less than every trick in the book to jack performance, thrills, and exclusivity to new levels. I'm going to put some footage up of the BMW M8, this is from the global launch in a pre-pandemic Portugal. The M8 is not the same as the M5 CS. However, a lot of what's present underneath the vehicle is very similar, if not exactly the same, as this car. So I'm going to show you some shots from underneath to help you visualize how they package all of this technology and all of this componentry underneath the vehicle. I had the interesting opportunity to spend three days learning about and then track testing a lot of the hardware that makes this car tick. And since plenty of that hardware is shared with the M5 CS, I'll be cutting to some images from underneath the BMW M8 to help you visualize what's going on underneath the car. 20 inch bronze wheels, that's uh, carbon ceramic brakes behind there. And if we look closely, you can see that sort of uh, alligator skin finish gives away the carbon ceramic material. And the material that those brake rotors are made out of is actually from the same family of stuff they use to line space shuttle hulls because of its resistance to stress from heat. Pirelli P0 Corsa tires on here. These are extremely sticky. It's almost like hot gummy bears on there. And you can see how much of that wheel is filled up by that giant rotor. I suspect you might want to see what's under the hood. That's two pulls, no further latch required. Carbon fiber hood, of course. And that is a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, 627 horsepower, 553 pounds of torque. And if we look up close here, you can actually see some of the anatomy. Those are the outlets from the turbochargers, which actually sit inside of the cylinder banks on this engine in between the cylinder heads there. And you can see these are liquid to air after coolers. They reduce the temperature of that turbocharged air before it gets inhaled by the engine. And while we're under here, we can actually see this exposed carbon fiber hood with the M5 CS logo on it. See, there's no paint on that. That's the exposed, unfinished carbon fiber weave. And that looks pretty cool. This is one of a few four-door cars on the road today designed to give its driver access to supercar levels of grip and speed with room for four. So what makes an M5 CS an M5 CS? And what sort of cool tricks can BMW's fastest car do? Well, let me show you. Six millimeter reduction in ride height, stiffer rear stabilizer bar, 
application specific ball joint mounts and the electronic dampers all tuned to make the best use of that possible. So to communicate all of this carbon fiber visually, they've got it exposed here on the mirror caps, uh, the roof of the car, you can see the exposed carbon fiber there and the rear splitter down here, stainless steel sports exhaust. And if we look underneath, but there is actually a valve in each muffler here that opens and closes to control how much of the muffler is being used and therefore how loud the exhaust is. Look inside here, chubby suede steering wheel, paddle shifters on the back there. Those are carbon fiber, of course. Lots more carbon fiber on these two-piece M Sport carbon racing bucket seats. You can see this is a very serious bolster here. This is a thick piece of solid material. This is not soft. And so if you're of a certain anatomy, uh, you'll have to be careful getting in there and out uh, so that nothing gets snagged or struck. Now the M5 Competition Sport gives you a lot of different ways that you can customize how it drives and how it displays information to you. And I'm gonna show you some of those and the interfaces that you'll use in the process uh, right now. Let's start off here with this gear shifter. We've got park down here on this little button. And up top, here's the pattern. So right now we're parked. Uh, neutral is tapped to the left. Drive is tapped to the right or sport mode or manual mode if you like. Of course, paddle shifters here in carbon fiber, right for up, left for down. These are not paddle shifters. We'll get back to those after. Also tap forward to gear down, backwards to gear up. Neutral is tap to the left. And if you want reverse, it's left and up. And the shifter stays there in reverse gear. All right, so that's a look at how we control the transmission. Now let's take a look at how we control the rest of the driving experience. And we'll just need two buttons for that. So down here we have the mode button and the setup button. When I press the mode button, I'm just toggling between different drive modes. Tap the toggle, and up here on the screen, we see road, track, and sport. Now notice when I'm toggling here, it's only letting me pick between road and sport, not track mode. If you wanna go into the track setting, watch this. You've gotta actually hold the button down for a couple of seconds and it's gonna show you a disclaimer because this car is very serious about you not using track mode on a public road. And you can activate track mode like that. You can see it's actually powered down the central screen and the audio system to allow you to just focus on what's important, which is the road ahead and these race car looking instrument displays. It's a bit tricky to get the camera to focus on a head up display sometimes, but I think you can see that. You got that rev counter there. So road, sport, and track are the three preset drive modes, but if you like, you can go in and customize your very own. To do that, we need the setup button. And when we press it, what it brings us up to here is a settings menu. And now what I can do is rather than choose from a preset, I can actually control specifically the response I want from each system. I can put the engine in its efficient setting, sport or sport plus. So this is sort of leisurely, all-purpose driving, spirited driving, and racetrack driving. Similarly for the chassis, I can pick if I want the ride to be comfortable, sporty, or ready for the racetrack. Steering, comfortable, which is sort of light and lazy, ideal on the highway, or sport, which is heavier and quicker, or ideal for more enthusiastic driving. We can see down here, MX Drive, that's the all-wheel drive system, and I can choose between four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive sport, which sort of only powers the front wheels as a last resort when it needs to, and two-wheel drive. Now to engage those settings, I need to go down here and turn off the stability control. So we hold this down. It's warning me now that DSC is turned off. I now have access to as much wheel spin as I want. And I can go in here and make this all-wheel drive system a two-wheel drive system. And finally, once you've got this dialed in the way you like, you can actually use those little red buttons I showed you earlier to assign presets that make it easy to just select your favorite settings with the touch of a button. So what I've done is I've got M2 here set up to be my sort of normal uh, highway driving mode. I click that and you can see referenced up here on the screen. All my stuff here is in the efficient, comfortable setting. So that's a setup for leisurely driving. Over here on M1, 
I've got that set up for something a little sportier. So when I click this, you'll see those settings change over there. And now I've got things dialed up a little bit. Launch control will see you rocket from zero to 60 in three seconds flat. Listen closely and you'll even hear some gears whining through the floor as shafts spin, clutches grab and release. And torque is divvied up and metered out between and across the axles, giving each of these P0s exactly as much power as it can transmit to the road at any given moment. With less sound deadening and the stiffer engine mounts, you feel and hear more of what's going on under the floor in the process, and launching this car hard is an incredibly mechanical experience with comically violent forces exerted on the occupants. So if you're shopping for one of these, you'll find it gives you a lot of cool stuff to try, and you can expect a hell of a show in the process. But what's more badass, a carbon fiber M5 or a station wagon from Mercedes with similar levels of thrust and power, and what I'd call a more responsive transmission, more impressive after dark interior treatment, and a better soundtrack from under the hood. Or the Tycon Turbo. Same ballpark where acceleration is concerned, but with even better throttle response and almost total silence, because of course this one's electric. And not only is this one of the fastest cars I've ever driven, but also one of the most beautiful highway cruisers I've ever driven too. It is always nice to have choices. And if you're wondering, about 171,000 Canadian as you see this M5 CS here, I'm Justin Pritchard and I'm going to buy a lottery ticket.